Okay, perfect. Uh, well, in this communication, I will talk about how the re-study of the necropolises of the first century before Christ containing painted Iberian ceramics in the so-called Illicitan style is changing the way we understand society at this time of the end of the era and also the diversity. Firstly, a very brief introduction to what we mean by Iberian culture. The Iberian culture is that we developed on the Mediterranean side of the Iberian Peninsula between the sixth and the first centuries before Christ and went into the Ebro, Segura and Guadalquivir valleys. It is not a homogeneous culture or a state entity, but rather groups of people fully immersed in the Iron Age uh, who share a series of common archeological characteristics such as coin minting, writing, decorated will made pottery and which were mentioned also in ancient sources. Among the regions, we will talk about the Iberians of the Contestania, the southeastern region between the Sugar River and the city of Cartagonova. Regarding Iberian funerary world, we will say that the Iberian world, since its beginnings, has always maintained an incineration ritual. The bodies were cremated and the ashes were placed in an urn accompanied by the grave goods. The most typical deposit at the peak of Iberian culture, this is between the fourth and the third century before Christ, is, as you can see in the photograph, a grave with the remains deposited in a urn, accompanied by Attic or Magnograecan imports and disabled weapons, especially the sword at the right, named Falcata, and the spear named Soliferium at the center of the photography. It should be noted that at this time, the tombs were marked, were have a sign, with the use of sculptures representing animals, in this case, a cow or Cicopompus beings. However, from the third century before Christ, after the Second Punic War, the Iberian funerary world was simplified. A sculpture disappeared and burials became simpler, with weapons disappearing in most of them. This is how we arrive at the funerary world of the first century before Christ in Contestania, at a time when, after having collided with Punics in the Second Punic War, the Contestania begins to be effectively integrated into Roman sphere. Thus, we find in this century the presence of fortresses along the coast made in order to control the territory in the civil wars that were fought here in Spain, first between Sertorius and Pompey, and later between Julius Caesar and Pompey's sons. After these war conflicts, the territory was definitively controlled uh, by the foundation of Roman cities like such as Colonia and Municipia that attracted a lot of population from the Italian peninsula. However, the Roman Republican and the late Iberian funerary rites are very similar at this time with similar urns accompanied by the grave goods without any direct or fossil or clear marker of, of ethnicity that would allow us a priori to know what the culture of the buried person is. The necropolis found in the Contestania in the first century before Christ are funerary site that seems to be sharing places with Roman presence, with municipia, camps, and fortresses in the surroundings of these spaces. In some cases, these funerary areas have been used since ancient Iberian times, being reused at this time in this late period, highlighting the sacred meaning of these places. In this context, when painted Iberian ceramics in illicit style have appeared, traditional research has treated this element of material culture as a director fossil and an ethnicity marker. Necropolis with this pottery have been dated in a time prior to the effective Roman conquest in the end of the second century before Christ or the beginning of the first century before Christ. And all the tombs in which it appeared have been considered ethnic, ethnically Iberian. But let us look so at some of these necropolises. The first one we will pay attention to is in Pobleno, in La Villa Joyosa, where we find a large necropolis that was used in ancient Iberian times and reused now in the first century before Christ, with cremation being placed along a pathway and very close to the road, a military camp was set up dating from the time of the Sertorian conflict. And also a Fulonica, a dye house that dyed textiles according to Roman fashion, was in operation. In this context, in this necropolis of Pobleno, 11 burials were found inside, inside Calathois, 
which are these kind of ceramic containers resembling to top hats that served as a scenario urns. Along with this decorated calathoid, Campanian black glassware and oil bottles were also found, which are currently being studied. However, all these cremation have been considered Iberian due to the presence of these decorated ceramics. However, as we continue to observe, necropolises where, where this type of material appears, either as a cinerary urn or as an element of the grave goods, uh, we will see that these associations do not seem to be so clear. Let's look at the northern necropolis of the Tolma de Minateda, the site of the Roman municipium of Ilunum, which was founded in time of Augustus' first princedom. In this necropolis, the tomb 23 stands out, from which this crater that we have in the center of the photography has been recovered. It was covered by a plate type Lamboya 5, made in Campanian beware, and dated to the middle of the first century before Christ, where we should highlight this decoration composed of a bear and a deer. And Oinohoe, this jar, decorated solely with plant motifs, was also recovered from another of these cremations that they did at the same time. Okay, um, in Alacant, located in front of the late Republican fortress of Tosal de Manises, which later became the municipium of Lucentum, we have the necropolis of El Fapegal. Here we find a group of tombs ex excavated by amateurs and dated to the change of the era. Among them, we must highlight the tomb, the tomb number two, where the container decorated in this Elysian style is covered by a terra sigillata, Dragendorf 18, dated, dated to the first decades of our era. Finally, we have the North African necropolis of Portus Magnus in Bethiowa, nowadays it is Algiers. There, an excavation carried out by M. Vincent in 1937 found a burial tomb, very important, covered by a stone slab and with the skeleton facing east to west in a ritual with clear neopunic roots. An, an Iberian Oinohoe decorated with this Elistan style was found inside this tomb accompanied by a volute lamp, the late Republican kind of lamp, and two plates of Terra Sigillata Italica, Dragendorf 17, dated to the change of the era. This definitively shows that not all those who use this type of painted pottery in their burials were Iberian. And here the contact could come, as Pliny the Elder says, from the fact that the Icositans, the citizens of Icosium, today Algiers, paid their taxes in the colonia of Iliki, nowadays Elche here in the southern part of the maps, from where the ceramics probably were originated. In addition to this data obtained from the early study of the necropolis, let us see what we are talking about when we talk about pieces in this illicit style. The, those are examples from the place of origin, the site of Lalcudia Delts. This was uh, the double founded Roman colony of Filiki. First, it was Cassirian and later Augustan. That's because it's Colonia, Iulia, Iliki, Augusta. We can see that these ceramics are decorated with very Baroque compositions where the vegetable compositions can take the center stage, but above all, the figure of the bird and the wolf uh, are the main protagonists, which can be accompanied by smaller animals, such as rabbits or fishes, anthropomorphic and winged beings can also appear more rarely, as well as humans interacting with animals to form a scenes. This, starting from the environment that we observed in the first century before Christ in Contestania, we launched the hypothesis that the representation of birds and wolves may be linked to a specific meaning for the afterlife. In this way, the bird, specifically the woodpecker and the wolf, were the animals of the god Mars, the Picus Martius and Lupus Martius. We should not forget that the large number of Italic and auxiliary soldiers, and which were under protection of this god, passed through these spaces, which are colonies. Moreover, according to myths, these two animals were in charge of funding and guiding, uh, guiding the young Italics in search of new territories to conquer and ensure their success. In addition to this, we find the belief present among the vegetal compositions acquires great relevance as an element of eternal life. Uh, since also the evil leaves seems to die with cold, 
uh, they resurrect and green up in summer in a cycle that in a cycle that resumes the eternal life of the soul after the disease of the body. This imaginary is combined with the with the compositions and perhaps with some elements of the Iberian religion, which we don't know, are generated from the hybridization between local and Roman inhabitants that are arriving at this time. In this context, we find that Iberian ceramics are used as containers, especially the calathoi, as we've seen. Also, in other contexts of habitat, they do imitate the forms of Roman tab tableware and fine walls were. And the Lysitan style has a role as an ethnic marker, but not, as it was believed, but as an element that combines and synthesizes the final Iberian world and the beginning of a new provincial Roman culture. The discussion that underlies these facts is whether this ceramic style that accompanies its accompanying, accompanying Iberian elites that were Romanized, or if on the contrary, it's a product generated by the Iberian craftsmanship, who knows very well the technique, to supply this type of products and iconography to Italic contingents that import to this place their beliefs and symbols. In the slide, you can see one of the clearest parallels between a painted pottery from Iliki and its parallel in the so-called Isernia tombstone, that is a city near Rome, with the representation of a hooded walker who is covered with a pianula viatoria, that it's like a, a sleeveless cape made for walking, accompanied by his horse. In conclusion, uh, we can say that with recent respect to funerary world of this first century before Christ, we must break with the formula that painted pottery is equivalent to an Iberian burial. The iconographic study of these decorations of the Lysitan style must be continued from this perspective of Italic myths. Going deeper into this aspect, we found that the city of Capua, one of the most important cities in the Roman world of this Italian peninsula, there was a figure of a deer linked to the goddess Artemis Diana, with a legend associated with the conquest of this city during the Second Punic War. This legend linked to this animal to, longe to longevity and very long life and a good health. Thus, it was frequent to observe the figure of the deer, as we see in the fresco, linked to the world, to the funerary world, and invocations to have had a long life and a lasting one in the beyond. At this point, we should that the representation of this animal at this crater could be an illusion transmit from the legion from soldiers that was captured by Iberian craftsmanship in this kind of ceramic vessels. This entire necropolis restudy helped us to understand the complexity and diversity of this first century before Christ, a very changing society, but there is still a lot of work to do. It's a rich universe where material culture we find in these burials demonstrates the synergies between Iberian craftsmanship and the Italic population contingents that are beginning to arrive in Hispania and founding these now cities. In short, an Italic influence that marks the Iberian productions and the way in which this population of the Contestania were buried. Thank you, you all.